Our first guest tonight is a United States senator from Vermont and former presidential candidate. Please welcome back to the show, Senator Bernie Sanders. Well, welcome back to the show, Senator. How are you? I'm great. Good to be with you. You were our first uh, quarantine guest on March 30th, and I really hope the next time we talked it would be in, per uh, in person. But uh, I do appreciate you making time for us again. How are you? I know you're a man who likes to be around uh, your constituents. You like to be around people. How are you getting through this telephone Zoom era? I would be being dishonest with you if I didn't tell you that it's difficult. It, you know, I thrive and I get my oxygen from being around people. Uh, I miss being in the kind of physical contact I would like to be with my grandchildren. Uh, so it's hard, but, uh, you know, we're doing the best that we can do. Uh, you have been uh, through uh, many uh, protest movements uh, in your long uh, career uh, as an activist. Uh, well, what is your take on the protest moment that we're going through right now? Is it as earth-changing as many are saying it is? It is a very big deal. It is really uh, unprecedented and it's extraordinary, and especially taking place in the midst of the pandemic. And what you are seeing in large cities all over the country and in small towns is people saying enough is enough to police brutality and police murder, that we have to rethink the whole nature of policing in America, that we have to deal with institutional racism. Uh, and that is just an extraordinary moment in our country's history. You have clarified that you are not for abolishing the police, which a lot of people assume defunding the police means. Uh, where are you on that sliding scale between the idea of no police right. and I, I don't more think, effective police? Seth, I don't think that at the end of the day, most people think we should not have any police departments in America. But I think what most people think is we have to reallocate resources and rethink the function of policing, obviously. For a start, we have to do away with police murders and police brutality. That goes without saying. But the other thing that I think we have to do is to ask ourselves, should police uh, be forced to deal every day with issues like mental illness, uh, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, homelessness? Police spend a whole lot of their time and energy doing things that they are not necessarily trained to do, and that take a lot of resources. So I think what people want when we talk about defunding the police or, or reallocating resources is also to put money into the causes of crime. Why do we have more people in jail than any other country? Should we be legalizing marijuana, which in my view, we should. Should we be investing in jobs and education uh, rather than just locking up more and more people? So I think this moment makes us rethink the function of policing and the reallocation of resources, something I very strongly believe in. President Trump today signed uh, some executive orders on police reform, and even you know, Democratic leadership over the years has called for reforms like body cameras, like anti-bias trainings. Uh, does the president's steps today uh, does it make you optimistic, or do you feel like they are, are short of what we need and oh, so far as what we Seth, need. Seth, way, way short of what we need. And we are working uh, in the Senate, and I have introduced a set of proposals which go a lot, a lot further. I mean, the bottom line here is that police officers need to be held accountable for their actions. And that's something that has not taken place in the past. Uh, we need to make sure that police departments around the country received the training to understand that lethal force, shooting somebody, is a last response, not a first response. So there are a whole number of things that have got to be done. I think Trump is responding from the pressure of the American people, not just Democrats or independents, Republicans as well, but we have to go a lot further than Trump is talking about. Uh, another thing where I imagine you feel uh, the government needs to go further on is how we're taking care of people during this pandemic. Obviously, uh, Congress has passed some bills. It's been a while since they passed another one. Uh, what steps need to be taken moving forward? Because obviously things like unemployment insurance aren't going to go on forever. And uh, we could see a real spike in, in, in what people need, not just in the virus, but insofar as what people need from the government. Well, Seth, 
I would hope that out of this terrible moment in American history, which is really uh, unprecedented, I mean, you're looking at 110,000 people dead already from the virus. You're looking at 30 million people having lost their jobs. Uh, you're looking at people who have lost by the millions their health care, uh, people unable to pay their rents, worried about losing their homes, kids not being in school. It's an unprecedented moment in American history. And I would hope that we take this opportunity to say and ask ourselves, how do we get to where we are right now and where do we want to be in the next couple of months and in the future? Now, in the next couple of months, what we have got to do, not in the next couple of months, the next couple of weeks immediately, what we have got to do is pass what we call a Corona 4 piece of major legislation, which says that when 30 million people have lost their jobs and millions have lost their health care, we have got to stand up and protect them. Various ways to do that, but at the very least, working people need to continue to get decent unemployment checks when unemployment is so high. In my view, during the midst of this crisis, while we work toward Medicare for all, clearly right now, everybody must be entitled to health care as a human right. I think that a $1,200 one-time check is not enough during the crisis. We should make sure that every individual in this country gets at least $2,000 because so many of our people are hurting $2,000 a month. That's some of what we got to do. Long term, we have got to ask ourselves, how does it happen that when so many people lose their jobs, they also lose their health care? Should health care in America just be a job benefit or should it be a human right? Obviously, I think it should be a human right. I hope more and more people understand that. Second of all, before the pandemic, we had Trump, as you will recall, telling us what a great economy we had. Well, how great is an economy when half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck? And when the paychecks stop, hunger and desperation set in. So we have got to make sure that we raise the minimum wage in this country to at least 15 bucks an hour, make it easier for workers to join unions. You know, we have got to make sure that all of our kids get the quality education that they need. So what I'm saying, Seth, is that in this terrible moment in American history, when so many of our people are hurting, it is time to rethink some of the basic priorities of our nation, some of the basic institutions in this country, and as the wealthiest country on earth, ask ourselves where we want to be in the future. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Senator Bernie Sanders.